All right, guys, welcome back to Hollow Mechanic. Today we are uh, providing a new part to help with uh, Ferrari FF and California, the early California, not the California T, but with the uh, DCT rebuild process to make your gearbox more reliable. All right, so what do we have here? Well, right here we have a GTC4 Lusso nose cone or front transmission cover. And here we have one for the FF. And they look identical. From the outside, they are, for all intents and purposes, identically made. Um, but there's something different from the inside of it. And this is one of the few things that Getrag has changed over the years. So they, you know, everyone always calls and says, I have a, an F12, so I won't have the Weeple problem. Yeah, you still will. That problem they have done nothing about. But uh, this is one of the rare problems that they have done something about. And on the early California and the FF, uh, they, those are before they made this change. And so there's no solution for that without replacing the entire nose cone case. That means you'd have to replace this entire case with a new model. And um, I'm, I don't believe that's available for purchase separately. So what we've done is we've come up, we've copied basically their solution. Um, they came up with a solution that is in all the newer cars, the California T, the uh, F12, the GTC4 Lusso, the 812, any of the Ferraris that have a front engine and a rear, uh, obviously they all have the seven speed DCT rear drive, okay? Um, you won't see this on the Mercedes. They use a different front cover that does not use a cone shape. Um, and you won't see this on the Ford GT. It's a rear engine, rear wheel drive car. So this, I'm seeing a lot of this problem with the FF specifically. And just like the Weepole seal issue, this is uh, due to something called bearing creep. Um, and bearing creep is when you have a high load on a bearing and it develops a, um, a torque or a, um, a pressure in a fore and aft direction instead of being a radial. So basically the bearing wants to start moving. And NSK uh, have, if you just Google NSK and bearing creep, you can see that they have papers published about it. They make creep free bearings, none of which are used in this um, get track transmission. Uh, but this is what causes that infamous Weepole seal. And this is why, you know, uh, we, we, when we fix the Weepole seal, it's a better repair than what Ferrari is doing because Ferrari is just giving a new case with the same bearing and the same um, ability to creep. So it, it just leaves the door open for a later issue. Now for the front nose cone, this also has bearing creep. and I'm gonna show you what that looks like here. This is the nose cone of the FF. And as you can see there at the end, we've got these little ridges and some loose metal right there. You can see that came off. We can just pick at it. I don't want to because I'll get a splinter, but you can pick that up. And what that is, is not normal. Here is the uh, GTC4 Lusso. And you can see it's nice and clean. And there is a slight lip down here and a nice even bearing wear pattern. You can see the little shiny path there. Whereas here it creeped up and it actually creeped up enough to where this started to wobble and the bearing locked on, the bearing got stuck and locked onto this shaft and was then spinning in the case um, and then causing movement, which then is, uh, you know, placed directly on the front of the clutch, which uh, can cause serious issues. So we, we don't want this to continue happening and neither did Getrag. So what did they do? They came up with this co polymer cone, okay? And if you can see down in there, okay, so that bearing right there, basically what it tries to do is it tries to creep up the shaft and walk up until it locks in. And so Getrag came up with this polymer cone. And what it does is it just rests on the outside diameter of that bearing, the part that's pressed into the case there. That part does not spin. What spins is the rollers on the inside. And then on this top section, this outer section here presses up against the outer race of this bearing, which again, does not spin. This is, this doesn't need to spin. The shaft itself in the middle is what does the spinning. Typically the bearing stays still and you get the rotation of the shaft in the middle, okay? So because of that, this polymer works well and all it needs to do is prevent the bearing from creeping. And that torque, that, that pressure that's generated that causes the creep is so low that the creep-free bearings the NSK cells are just bearings with a groove in them and an O-ring that just gives some resistance. Now, doesn't need a lot of force. That's why using the Loctite retaining compound for bearings 
uh, works for the other, and it would work here as well. So Micah, why don't we just pull this out and put the Loctite and put it back in? You can do that. But it's very difficult to get down in there and to get a puller to pull it out. Because the bearing itself is in a blind hole, which you can use a blind race puller, but it's also got a metal cage with rollers that are more, the cage is more fragile in the middle. So trying to get a puller in there, it would be a specialized puller. So in the case where it's, it's not come out, Basically when we take a gearbox apart and it hasn't moved yet or it's moved up a slight bit, then what we do is we drive it back down and use our new uh, cone, which is an aluminum. Uh, and why do we go with aluminum? Because it, it, you know, DCT fluid it can damage polymers. So picking the right polymer is extremely important. And I just don't want to spend the money trying to chase down effective polymers when I know aluminum it has the same expansion properties that the nose cone itself will has, have as it heats up, so or, or, or close to it, being that it's not cast. But um, you know, it has a very similar heat expansion curve. And you may be thinking, okay, Michael, why don't we just get these from GetTrack for the older cars? And this actually won't work in the FF. And let me show you why. If you look in here, you can see the GTC Luso has a little groove, and this little lip here has been ground down so you have a wider hole let's compare that one to this one here you see it's a very short hole and there's no groove so if you put this inside here well it doesn't drop down into place and then you can't put this bearing into place and then it's actually not touching the bearing on the other end so this will not work so what we've done is we've made one that has a little bit of a smaller id or uh, OD outer diameter on the outside and also a cutout for that groove. So this is what ours looks like. We can drop it down in here. Now that looks straight, but it is not straight right now. You have to make sure that this is sitting right flush with the case on the bottom side. And when it does, it will sit flush here. There we go. See now it's sitting flush. You saw that? We saw it like where it's close. This looks like it's it, but you can see a little bit of a, of a raised edge there around the outside. See it more pronounced there? It is not straight. You need to move this until it sits flush. Okay, now we have it nice and flush. And basically what you're trying to do is you're just trying to get that nose to needle perfectly down. And this outside will be perfectly flush here. And then we can put our... Um, input drive shaft back in it. You may have to j spin and jiggle a little bit to get it to line up with the clutch properly. But once you do have that in, then at that point, you'll be able to drop this down and then put your snap ring back in. Okay, and of course, obviously with our seal kits, we come with new seals for this. Um, but now we are adding this aluminum piece in. Um, upon request, which we highly recommend for any FF or early California. And um, this will, again, prevent you from having an issue that develops into something bigger that, again, Getrag is just not supporting you with, Ferrari is not supporting you with. I'm glad that we're able to do that. They aren't cheap. It costs a lot of money to get them made, um, but it's way cheaper than that front case is. And uh, it will give you a longer life uh, with your FF or early California. DCT. And the good thing about these spacers is you can install them without removing the transmission. So if you've already had your transmission rebuilt by us, if it was an FF, um, you know, just let us know. We'll send you one of these. You can uh, have someone install that wherever you are locally or bring it back to us and we can install one of these preemptively. For some of the cars, again, if the bearing was already off the shaft or loose, then we replaced it or Loctited that in place, so you may not need it. Um, but it was about it is about three out of ten FFs that the bearing has moved out of place. So if it was still down in there, uh, we did not, you know, apply any Loctite. Uh, and in, in which case, it would be good to have one of these just to prevent it from moving. And if you're about to do an FF, any FF client that we take on in the future we're just going to go ahead and add this to their kit that way we prevent that damage from happening but again if you ha if you have a car without one of these in it it's a very uh relatively simple job to install one while it's in the car